Hello, and welcome to Learning Music with Pat. Today, as I said in the last segment, I'm going to do, deal with clarinets. Now, clarinets are one of my favorite instruments. I'd have to say, I started off by studying three years of piano lessons, and I'm glad I did because it's been a real help to me in teaching. And then I really wanted to play saxophone. I switched to saxophone and stopped piano, and I loved the saxophone from the beginning. And I've always studied, I've already studied uh, saxophone, and, and I just do a lot of work with saxophone. And then after I got to college, my professor said to me, I'd like to have you learn how to play the clarinet. Well, the clarinet is a lot more difficult than the saxophone, but I love the clarinet as much as I did the saxophone. I love the tone of it. I love the way it works. It is more complicated. You have to learn two different types of fingerings instead of one, because on the saxophone, if you use an octave mechanism, you bounce up an octave. On the clarinet, you don't bounce up an octave if you bounce up an octave plus five other notes, four or five other notes. So it ends up that you have to have a completely different fingering, set of fingerings for the upper register than you do for the lower register. Nonetheless, it's an absolutely beautiful instrument and I love it and I use it a lot. Now, I wanna show you, this is my oldest clarinet. I don't know how old it is. When I bought it, it was ancient, and I sent for it, and I thought I would be able to play it, but when it came, it was one of those things, you take it as it is, it's missing one of, a neck piece here, and a mouth piece, and it's all gray, and it's in terrible shape. But I wanna show you, the earliest clarinets were made out of metal, and, when they're, and I've seen them when they are shiny and bright, and they've been polished up, and they look absolutely wonderful, they look just gorgeous. And that's the way I thought this was going to be when I bought it. But this makes a good teaching tool. This is an instrument that the tube, you can see, is very narrow. I'm going to hold it backside too. You're not going to be able to pick up a whole lot. It's gray, it's tarnished. But here's the, the, uh, the uh, tube of the instrument. It's not very wide. And then you can see all of the, all of the keys. These keys are called side keys. And then you have side keys on the other side as well. There are side keys that run all the way up and down the instrument. You have a little place where you put your thumb, your right thumb, and like all woodwinds, the left hand always goes on top and the right hand always goes on the bottom. This is an ancient, ancient instrument. It was made in the United States in Elkhart, Indiana, which a lot of instruments were made in Elkhart, Indiana. There the, were a number of, of uh, companies that produced instruments. So this is very, very old. I can't play it, but if I had the money, I'd love to have it renovated because I think it would be just a very, very nice instrument. I think that it would be playable. I don't think it's in any shape where you'd have to say, well, uh, it'll never be played again. But look at the tarnish on it. Now, I talked about tarnish in the last segment. I could take for a polish, and I could polish that up. And it would be shiny, and it would be bright. But it would also tarnish very rapidly. With the plating processes that you have in modern day instruments, they will never tarnish. You know, I showed you some of the flutes I had. These aren't the only flutes I had. I have some at home that I didn't bring in. So I have a, a several flutes. But you know, with, with the plating process, they generally don't tarnish. What can happen though is after a few years, the, tar the, uh, the lacquer starts to wear off a little bit and then you can have it relacquered. But this would be bright and shiny if I wanted to polish it up. There would be no sense to do it because it can't play anyway. Nonetheless, it makes a really nice teaching tool. Well, I have other clarinets to show you. And with plastic, a lot of clarinets, clarinets can be made out of plastic, hard rubber, or wood or metal, the metal I've just shown you. Hard rubber I don't think is even used anymore because the plastics are so easy to work with and they, they look so nice, uh, you know, and they do have a gloss to them. I'm going to show you, this is a Bundy student instrument. It's a, clar whoops, it's a clarinet, full instrument, and I don't know if you can notice, but if I hold it just right, you can see that it's shiny. It has a glint about it. 
and it is shiny. I've got it right there. Why? Because it's made out of plastic, and you can get any amount of shine to it. You can get color to it. There is a company, I believe, that makes clarinets in different colors. I've never seen them, but I understand that I've seen advertisements for it. But most of the time, your clarinet will be black. That's the traditional, and it does shine. Well, let me compare with this instrument. I want to talk about this instrument for a minute anyway. It's heavier. It's quite a bit heavier, but I'm going to hold them both up. There is, this is a kabart, and the kabart is a very, very high-ranking, uh, wonderful name as a French clarinet. The kabart is a French instrument. It's a French clarinet. And let me, you can still see some gloss to it. That's because this is made out of wood and this is made out of plastic. Generally speaking, the plastic's gonna shine more than the wood. So let me hold them up together and I'll just move them around a little bit so you can see what they really look like. I need to talk about the kabart. So let me put this one down. The Bundy is a student instrument, for, I think, believe for Selmer. And I want to mention a lot of companies that make musical instruments, professional uh, value instruments, they usually also produce a student model instrument that's less expensive, considerably less expensive, but plays very well. And if you are buying an instrument for a child or a beginner, there's nothing wrong with buying a good quality student model because they play well. As a matter of fact, I've used student models in professional orchestras. I used to do it quite a bit. I had one clarinet that was called a DuPont Superior. I thought about bringing it in. Uh, I can't play it anymore. It's a European model. And uh, I, was play I played it for years. I was in university bands and university orchestras, and I, went at, and I was in marching bands. Anything I did, that, that instrument and I were like glued at the hip. I always had it with me, and I always played it, and I loved it, and it sounded wonderful. One day as I was playing it, a whole section of keys from the top just dropped off the instrument, just dropped completely off. I picked it up and I said, how could this happen? You know, and I tried to put it back and it wouldn't go back. So I took it to, uh, to a play, somebody who specializes in repairing instruments and they tried to fix it and they couldn't fix it either. So therefore I couldn't use it again. But the reason is because since it was a European instrument, it was not standard size. You would never know it when you looked at it. It looked like any other clarinet. You would never know it, and, and uh, it played just like any other clarinet. It fingered just like any other clarinet. It sounded great just like any other clarinet, but the keys were not standard size. They were either a little larger or a little smaller, and there's no way it could be repaired. And that was a plastic instrument. So a plastic instrument is good. This is a wooden instrument. This is a Kabat French model instrument, top of the line, wonderful instrument, quite heavy to hold. It's wood, and as you know, it's wood, and the, and the black color comes from the fact that these instruments that are wood, like these clarinets that are wood, have been soaked in oil. So I want to describe to you now how these little black clarinets are made. And I, it, I'm going to uh, just show you some things. I think I did a sketch or something. But the instruments that are clarinets, uh, the, the, they take pieces of wood that are about the same size as a clarinet would be, long and not too wide, and they cut them pretty much to size in terms of shape. They haven't cut any holes in them or anything like that. So they're like blocks of wood. and. Um, they would, that would look something like this. And then they put them in oil and they soak them for months and months and months and months. And uh, just a very, very long time. And all of that wood gets soaked with oil. And the longer that it's left and the longer it gets soaked, 
the blacker it becomes because it's picking up the color of the oil. So it sits there and soaks like it seems almost like forever. When the instrument, when the block of wood has enough oil in it, then they start cutting it. They would take it out and they would start cutting it in the shape of the clarinet and they would start working with it and the whole tone holes would go in and then they would get it all shaped up and that's quite a process. An instrument like that, a wooden instrument like that, is a very long process to making it. Now once in a while you'll get an instrument that's brown and uh, it'll be a brownish instrument. I showed this last time, I'll show it again. And supposing this is a clarinet, and supposing that you get it, and I do like the color of this. This is about the color of the brown clarinets that you might see. The difference being that, that with the brown clarinets, it hasn't been soaked with oil as much, so it's a lighter color. And you can actually see the striations of the wood, and they're very, very attractive. These instruments are very, very attractive if they're brown. But the reason that they're brown is they're not completely soaked with oil. I have seen those uh, rarely, but I've seen those brown instruments. They look very attractive. They're very nice. They have a very good shade of brown. I, I, I don't think the uh, camera might not be able to pick it up, but I can see some striations on the wood here. But it's not as obvious as a clarinet would be if it hadn't had enough oil in it. So what they did with the brown clarinets, they would have it soak with oil, but not completely, so it's not completely black, and then they do the same process in terms of building the clarinet. So uh, the wooden clarinets are soaked with oil, and then they, they get carved up and so forth, and then the brown clarinet would be it had not been soaked as much. Now, the oil and everything, it, 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 there's a way that you have to take care of these instruments that are wood. Wood instruments are considered to be more valuable, more expensive than plastic instruments. But there's nothing wrong with the plastic instruments. I have wooden recorders. They're considered to be more value than the plastic recorders, but they play just as well. The plastic instruments play just as well as the wood ones, but the tone is a little different on the wood ones than, than with the plastic. There is a way to take care of these. Now, anything that's wood, needs to have oil applied so the wood won't crack. So what I would do, I haven't done it lately, but what I would usually do with this instrument to get to keep it in top shape, every two months or so, every three months or so, whenever I thought it was necessary, I would uh, take the instrument apart. Now a clarinet has five parts, including the mouthpiece. You have the mouthpiece, you have the barrel, you have the upper part of the body, which goes down to the mid right here, and there will be a, a there will be a silver top of that. This separates the top part of the body from the low part of the body. So you have a lower body and an upper body, and then down here you have the bell. Any time that a, an instrument kind of flares out, that's called the bell. Now there used to be a little uh, silver ring around this bell and it came off uh, because probably because the wood shrunk a little bit or something and I've got it, but it doesn't, it doesn't influence the playing of it. I do want to mention, if you put an instrument together, I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to show you the right way to put a clarinet together. I'm not going to take the whole thing apart, but uh, especially between the upper and the lower body, I will take this off and you have cork. You don't have cork in flutes. You do have cork in clarinets and in saxophones. If you have cork, every so often you need to put some cork grease on it so it doesn't dry out and it makes it easier to put it together. If you don't have cork grease, you can use Vaseline. It'll do the same thing, but Vaseline is probably not as good for the instrument as the cork grease because it's specially made for cork. When you put the instrument together, I will put my hand down like this. There is a little metal piece. I'm not sure whether you can pick it up. This little metal piece right there, I've got my finger on it. It is going to be important to get that metal piece up. And the way you get it up is just to put your hand down and that metal piece 
will fly up. Okay, a little bit. It won't fly up a lot. Here we go. There, good. That's wonderful. That, that's terrific. It will. You can see that it goes up. This one right here. It does move up, and then you take your bottom part of the instrument and you and you just kind of wiggle it in, so that. This one is so that it slides underneath it. There's a little part right here. This has got to slide underneath this part that is up so they don't jam together. And then the instrument is together the way that it should be. I see so many uh, children, so many students, they take a part, a lower part of an instrument and a higher part of the instrument, and especially in the flute, and they just jam it together. Okay, now the instrument's together. The instruments are delicate. And you just can't do that. If you do that, you can damage it. So particularly with a clarinet, you need to have your hand getting one part up, a little lever up, and sliding the other underneath it. Then you won't do any damage to it. And of course, all of these parts come out. The uh, bell will come out. The, uh, the uh, barrel will come out. The mouthpiece comes out. And then what you do is when you're going to oil an instrument and put oil on it because the woodwinds need it periodically, you will take every part of the instrument and separate it. And then after you separate it, I guess I may as well do that. I had it half there anyway. Um, let me put this down. Then I would put it on the table and and then I would take a, a or you get special oil, just don't put any oil on it. There's special oil that's made for it. You get a little device like this, it's a little brush like. Put the special oil and stick it through. Now this is too big for the clarinet. It's more like for a saxophone, but it's the one that was handy, so I took it. And you just draw it down, put oil on it draw it down, and then you'll get oil in the inside of the instrument. Then I used to put some oil on the outside of the instrument. You need to be very careful, however, because you do not want to get oil on the pads. So for any of the keys, that they, these keys all have pads on them. This is one of the things that make an instrument like this complicated. And it has rods and pads. You can probably see it. If it, if it can be picked up right here, there's a pad that's obvious. Some of these keys are closed. They just close, and you have to use a key to open them up. Some of them will stay open, and you have to have a key to close it. Now, that's great. Here's the key, and there's a little pad in there. I can, you can see it, yeah. You can see part of that pad. Now, for, for a key that's closed, let's say, um, Oh, let's say this one here, it doesn't matter. I used to take and cut strips of plastic. I used to take like sandwich bags and just cut pieces on it and put it underneath the key, just manually open that key and put a piece of plastic there. And then when I put the oil in the instrument, it, the oil would not touch the pad. It's very important that you don't get oil or anything else on those pads, because if you do, you can destroy the pads. Now you can always replace them, but why, why do that? You know, just take care of the instrument so you don't have to replace them. Every so often, Pads have to be replaced on instruments anyway. You need, you need to repad the whole thing. It's a little more complicated than you think because the instrument will be totally taken apart and then all the pads will be put in. Then the instrument will be put back together and then all the pads have to balance with each other so they're all closing when they're supposed to close. And if you close one and then another stays open that shouldn't, then you can't play the instrument. So it gets to be a complicated thing. Woodwinds are complicated with rods and pads and, and springs and, and cork and all things like that. But at any rate, you, you put oil on it, you replace the oil, and then don't allow the wood to get dry, because if it's dry, then it can split. And if you have an instrument in which the wood has split, then it just keeps on splitting. If you continue to use it, it'll just keep on splitting. 
You never use alcohol, by the way, uh, on wood. So you wouldn't clean off an instrument if, if it's wood with alcohol because that will automatically split the wood. You can use alcohol occasionally for cleaning for the flute or you can use it occasionally for recorders, but you have to be very careful of alcohol. And the oil that you use for an instrument like this is a special oil made for it. It's not just something you pick up in the grocery store. You would go to a music store and get the right kind of oil and then you it would be able to do this every few months and it keeps the instrument just beautiful and the blackness comes once again from the fact that it has been soaked in oil and it's been made from that then of course it dries off and you have that black color and if you don't have it completely soaked in oil then it, the instrument will be brown so this is the way that, that you take care of clarinets if they're wood. Wooden instruments are more expensive, the tone is supposed to be better. I want to mention something about Stradivarius violins. It's not a woodwind, but, but Stradivarius violins cost millions of dollars. They're very, very rare. They're very expensive, they play beautifully, but, but they're made like any other violin. So why does the Strad play different and sound different than a regular violin. What makes them so valuable? Why, if they make them the same as a regular violin, is there, there's such a difference outside of the age? Well, it turns out that the wood that they used for the Stradivarius violins came from an area of the world that had intense, intensely cold winters. There was a period of time for several years when the winters were much colder than normal. It changed the nature of the wood. So when they used the wood, they made the violins like any other violins, but when they used the wood, there was a quality of the tone that was different because of the fact that the, that the quality of the wood was different due to the intense cold weather of those years that it was too cold. That's been given as one of the theories of why the strads are like they are. They certainly are expensive and beautiful. When you get to a wooden instrument, you have a vibrating wood and, and the sound of the instrument is somehow caused partly by the characteristics of the wood that it's made for. So sound and color and all of these things that go into making instruments is complicated, it's fascinating. I've barely touched upon it, but I want you just to understand the complicated nature of music and instruments. And if you get a plastic instrument, which most people have, they can play very, very beautifully. And most of my instruments are plastic, but some of them are not. And it's, it's just a difference, a little bit difference in the quality of the tone. Some flutes are open hole, some flutes are closed hole. And if it's an open hole flute, the fact that you're using your fingers and not just closing a key will sometimes influence the quality of the sound as well. So it becomes quite complicated, but it also becomes quite fascinating. So we're out of time. I'm going to close it here. We'll be doing something else next week. Please join me then.